What is up? This is the Carrier Comfort Link CCN, whatever you want to call it. Uh, scrolling marquee LED interface that they mount in these things. Push and push and push and push. This is one of the, actually one of the really bad ones. It's not going. Try the up button. Nothing. This is total crap. The enter button is kind of working. The escape button. But the, like these up and down buttons aren't working at all. And these have pissed technicians off. It's pissed me off. Today I am here to install actual tactile push buttons onto the circuit board and modify these units in such a way that when I am done with this, it's going to be better than this was when it was new. Taking the circuit board out, you just kind of unsnap it. Now some people have, in the comments before, have suggested that people just push so hard that it pushes the boards off of the uh, snap-on connectors and they just have to push it back on here and then they work fine. Well, that's never been the case for me. Maybe it has been for somebody, but uh, these, these hold the board clipped in there very well. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to scratch that off to reveal the copper underneath to give me a spot to solder on the new switches. The new switches I have from Digikey. So these little textile buttons right there. So I've got a whole bag of them. I've already done this to a few of them now. They work absolutely great. Okay, so this is how I've been prepping the board. And I kind of been changing how I do this with each one. But, uh, so I scratch off the coating to get down to the bare copper, and then I can flow some solder on there. And then see how this works is that each one of these little black lines, like one line goes up, the next one comes from up here and goes down. The next one goes up from here down. That way when you push the little button contacts on there, it's bridging these across. It's basically shorting this terminal to this terminal. Okay. So what I do is after I've scratched off down to the bare copper like you see here, and I then solder, uh, tin the copper or whatever you want to call it with some solder. I take these micro switches and I reorientate the little feet, the pins, you know, so they're orientated correctly. As I said, you know, this one went straight through and it's one wire and this one's one wire. So I, re I bend them so that I got the, the two feet are going to go up to the one contact here and then the other bottom two feet are going to go to this one. So. You just kind of lay them down in there, soldering them on, something like that. And that way, when I push the button, it's just shorting those two pads. So, uh, go ahead and keep soldering. Um, I'm doing this just on my little hat out here, hiding under the umbrella, whatnot, the soldering iron. A little shop fan right there, what do you call it? So, uh, you know, if I was at home, I'd be able to do a nice job. I'd be able to mount the camera, too, you know, on a little tripod or something to show you guys exactly how I do it. You just want it soldered so it's on there good because the solder's what's holding the switch. And, yeah, that's not going to come off. And when I'm done, I'll, the rubber pad will be just pushing down on this. Should boot up. There it goes. This uses uh, 24 volts right here, which then it uh, up here in the top right. Hey, that's the same part number that Train uses on their RTRM board. It's the same exact part <laughs> to make their well-regulated 5 volt power supply. So, uh, okay, so here we got the little LEDs and buttons. Now, I need to switch hands <laughs> or something. But uh, if I push this button, this is just gonna work. clicks, scrolls right through, you can hit enter, you can look at things, escape, the button works first time every time. Looks pretty good, you know, for packing on buttons out in the field. That looks pretty good right there. Get enough solder on there that's going to support the switches onto the board. 
Okay, so now the uh, circuit board is snapped back into the housing. You can see where the buttons are. And there's a little rubber pads. Now, of course, if I just did drop these in there with the, the buttons are raised up, so now you can see these don't go back down in there. It's an easy fix. I just take the dikes, aka diagonal cutters, and I'm going to snip off some of the nub here. Okay, and with that little piece right there cut off, which equals about the height of the switch, left with this, drop it in there. I'll be gluing those in there, and it just pushes the button. You can hear it click. So yeah. Ultra Gray Gasket Maker. Comes in and it goes to dab there, to dab there, to dab there. Put that down in there. Let that kind of dry for a little while. Of course, if the membranes were never cut out in the first place, wouldn't have to do that, but you know, had to do what we had to do over the last, I've been coming to this account for like three years and these things were just like, you would push and rub your finger on each one of these buttons for so long just to get this to like advance once. Okay, pretty much got done soldering up all these different controllers. Got some buttons in there. Here's the click, the power of the click. Yeah. So I just put this one in there. Let's turn the power on. Turn this unit off so we can get some quiet for a second. It's gonna boot up. Go, oh, got some shade. A little bit of flashing effect going on because of the camera's frame rate. Occupied no. So basically, escape. Push the down button. That LED is just gonna move with each click down the alarms, Whoop, go back up one, enter, current, of course there's none, escape, go back up to run status, view, let's see, uh, you can just navigate right through this thing now, supply air, temperature, lock it in there if you want, alarms, time, HVAC, just, or just let it cycle. So nice to be able to just push these buttons and just have this just scroll through every time you click and you can hear a click, a positive feedback information that your press is actually felt by something and acted upon. <laughs> oh, so as I said, when I got done with this modification, it wasn't just fixed. It is better than factory, better than the shit design that they come up with whoever made these for um, carrier so got these other ones got the RTV drying to get the buttons back in place I'm gonna start reinstalling those into the units so yeah Wow when these big uh, scrolls run they're almost as loud as a Goodman so I gotta talk a little loud over it 